Okay, you guys. Hello, it's Carol with Refunction Crafts, and I'm going to do a um, box video today. I'm going to embellish this beautiful cigar box that um, I received uh, from a friend in Happy Mail, and um, I'm looking forward to doing this one, and you can see what the theme is going to be. It's definitely going to be pink, and I've got some matching goodies that are going to go inside the box and outside the box and all over this box, and I can't wait to finish it. <laughs> so, um, so that's what we're going to be working on today, but... Um, on a serious note, you guys, I lost my fur baby a couple days ago, so we had to have her put down, my little Chloe, and um, I'm going to try and put a little video on the back end of this video um, just to show you guys what a sweet little angel she was. Um, anyway, so I'm a bit sad. <laughs> Uh, but I just wanted to, I, it made me think I'd like to read a quote um, just about animals and dogs and what we, what we get from them in the short time that we have them. Um, but anyway, this one, I'm going to read a couple of them. Um, this one says, dogs have a way of finding the people who need them and filling an emptiness we didn't ever know we had. And that is so true. Because now that I don't have my little Chloe, I feel a big empty hole in my heart. Um, I just miss her so much. And then there's another one here that says, Nobody can fully understand the meaning of love unless he's owned a dog. A dog can show you more honest affection with a flick of his tail than a man can gather through a lifetime of handshakes. And it's so true. They give us such unconditional love. And I really do wish they lived a longer time. My little Chloe was 14 years old. And in the last two weeks, she's been quite sick. And through my own selfishness, I waited until, uh, I think it was Thursday. I don't even know what today is. It was Thursday. I waited till Thursday to take her into the vet to have her put down. I knew she had to be put down. But she had started the night before suffering so badly that I just, I couldn't bear it anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I'm really torn up over this. Um, anyway, so we had to have her put down, and, and it was a really devastating loss for us. And I just want you all to say a little prayer for my Chloe and wish her um, well on her journey to uh, get over that rainbow bridge and, um, you know, she's going to see her sister up there, and she's going to see her grandmas, and all that good stuff. So I'm, I'm happy for her. Um, there was another quote here. Ugh, where did it go? Let's see. I've got to read this one. Um, it says, if there are no dogs in heaven, then I want to, then when I die, I want to go where they went. <laughs> And that's where I want to go. I want to go to doggy heaven. <laughs> but I have faith that they go where we go. And we do get to see them on the other side. So, um, you know, one day I will get to see my fur babies again. She's with her big sister, Juju. And I'm sure that was a happy meeting. And uh, the two, <laughs> Juju was a big, huge, um, big huge dog she was over 100 pounds I think by the time she passed anyway she was a big huge dog and then Chloe was this little tiny dog and they loved each other as sisters and even though Juju was younger than Chloe she treated Chloe as if she was her mother and when Chloe would get upset about something she would hover over her and she would lick her and and try to comfort her you know when she felt bad so it was a sweet sweet friendship that they had um, and I'm so lucky to have had two of the very best dogs that anyone's ever seen. Um, so anyway, that's my story for today. I've been a little sad. I've been doing some crafting, but not a lot. It's, I've been really, really down. So it's time to snap out of it and get things moving again. So 
that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do this beautiful box and my little Chloe's going to give me inspiration to um, really make this box gorgeous. So I'm going to open this up here and I'm sorry, I've got them, some things hanging behind the box and I'm just going to pull some of this stuff out. This is an ornament that I made and I'm going to put this ornament inside this box because it matches the whole theme of this um, particular box. So I thought what better way to uh, put something special in this box than to put this beautiful ornament in there. So that is going to be going inside the box when it's done. This will not be one of my least expensive boxes because there's a lot of really great stuff going inside this box, on outside this box, and, and you name it, um, it's, it's going in. The other thing that we're going to work on is this journal that's going to go inside the box as well. And I've kind of got everything together for this to put that together. So I wanted to keep those things together in one place and all of our little laces and stuff. And I did paint this box on the inside and the outside. And usually when I do my cigar boxes, I do not paint the insides. But this one I felt was uh, special. And because I painted the inside, it's a little tighter. The lid's a little tighter than it needs to be. So I will have to kind of sand and smooth this out on the edges so that this closes more easily. I mean, I can close it, but it's just a little difficult. Um, I don't know, maybe I don't have to do anything to it. It's pretty easy to pop open. It seemed like it was harder the first time. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this image to put on the top of this box. So she's going to go right dead center on this box. And so now I just need to figure out what's going to be going around her here. Now, I don't know what I did with it. I thought I brought in some of my trim that I planned on using and I think I left it in the other room. Hold on, I'm gonna go get that. Okay, got it. Um, okay, so it's going to have a little bit of pink and a little bit of this pinkish purple in it because I kind of felt like this kind of goes with some of the pink that's in here. It's almost a purplish pink. So I wanted to um, put some of this on, on the box as well, I think, I think, because I do have that going on this um, journal. So I thought, okay, it would be nice to kind of match the two up in a way so that the whole thing kind of goes together. So let's see here. What I think I'm going to do is, first of all, I really need to uh, decoupage. Let me go get my decoupage. Sorry, right, you guys, I had to just get my Mod Podge real quick. Actually, part of me wants to use my... I think I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac instead to put this on. I'm just going to flip it over and get this stuff moving to the top. My fabric tack is getting low, very low actually, and it's moving very slowly to the tip of my bottle. But I'm just going to go around the edge here. And try not to let this dry out before I can get it put down. And then we'll just kind of do some circles along the inside here. Try and get it to be sticky all the way around. 
this Fabri-Tac dries fairly quickly. So you do have to work with it sort of quickly um, when you're doing stuff like this so that it doesn't dry and get lumpy. So let me stand up for a second here and see if I can get this on center here. If it's not perfectly centered, I'm not going to cry. But we do want to get it as close as we can. So that looks really good to me. I'm just eyeballing it. Just like that. And the reason I'm fabric tacking this and not Mod Podging it is because um, this is cardstock paper and it's a very, very heavy and thick cardstock paper. So the fabric tack is going to hold it better, I feel, than the um, Mod Podge will. So I'm debating. Now I have this. But I was also debating on using this uh, lace, and this is a piece that I got in Happy Mail, and it really is very beautiful, and I could use that sort of on the, on the edges. I'm going to cut it in half if I do, and then it'll have the, you know, the wavy part of it uh, showing, but... Then the other part of me wants so much to make it sort of match the journal. And I've got just enough of this to put a piece on either side of the top of this box. And then I'm going to take this pink, beautiful pink eyelet lace. And I'm going to put this around the outside of the box so that it pulls the pink in. So I think that's what we're going to do because that was my first intention and we're just going to stick with that. And so I'm going to cut this right there. So there's that side. And that should just about be perfect and with a little pull that's going to fit perfectly on that side, so we're good. All right, and I am going to put something around the edge of this, and I think what I'm going to use there, and I did pull it out, but of course, oh, here it is. Um, I, I have to think about this because I've got a couple of different options. This can be part of the pink, and I can throw that in there to add pink. It's a little bit darker pink than the rest of this. So I kind of questioned whether I should go in that direction, or I could take this. I have a small piece of this trim left that Debbie sent me from Bird's Place. And this always looks so pretty on everything. And I really think this is probably the direction I want to go with this and put that around, frame the, the image with this. The other direction I could go is my friend Robin sent me some beautiful um, rhinestone trim. And that because I'm trying to make this such a special box, that would go very pretty around the outside of this too, although it doesn't want to turn the corner real well. Um, I mean, I could take it and kind of make it a little sort of whimsical, if you might, if you will, <laughs> and kind of have it going kind of like that. That would be very, very pretty. Look at that. Wow. And then, boy, it really doesn't want to go around that corner. And something like that. But then I feel like I'm using so much of this trim. The other thing I could do, this trim was enough that I could use it, you know, to go around a box, although it doesn't quite fit this box all the way around. 
but I could put a piece of it just going across the front of the box. Um, so I think I'm going to save this, and I think this really does go very nicely around the image. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get to work on this, and we're going to glue this around the edge of this image here. So we're just going to get ourselves a little start there with our hot glue. Okay. So I'm sure a lot of you have had animals and pets that you've lost over the years and if you're a big animal fanatic like I am the loss of your pet is huge. It's just huge. I mean, I, my, my pets are my children. Uh, my children were gone a long time ago. And our pets love us unconditionally. And they don't care if we make mistakes here and there and they don't judge us and they don't you know they're just good all the time and even if you know I know we all get mad at our pet for doing something pottying on the floor or something they might do I don't get super upset about things like that I just clean it up and move on and scold them a little bit and they're good <laughs> I figure that's all I have to do but um, for some people that's a big deal and I get it you know, I we've always had a doggy door. Jeff built a doggy door um, for our dogs. And from day one, you know, we trained them right off the get-go to use it. And from day one, they were just almost excited about it. So um, we never had problems with that sort of thing until Chloe got sick. <clears throat> And with whatever she had going on, she got, um, she got dementia. So she, um, in the last couple of days, we aren't even certain that she knew who we were. Sometimes she would look at us like, who are you and why are you talking to me and touching me? You know, she would just look at us. And then there was those times when she would look at us with that look of just utter fear, which was what we were getting the night before we took her to have her put down. Um, thankfully, Jeff went with me and I didn't have to do it alone. Um, I don't think I could have. So he was able to go with me and we both held her. Um, I held her when they, um, when they did the euthanasia. Uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that because I was just... I was shaking, I was crying, I was, oh, I was a wreck. And so I held her for a few minutes, and then Jeff took her, and he held her for a few minutes, and we both got a little bit of time. I mean, she had already passed in my arms, and Jeff held her after uh, the fact. But while I was holding her, he was he was looking in her eyes and, and talking to her and... Um, you know, just rubbing her head and letting her know it was going to be okay. And while it's a really, really hard thing to do, it's a beautiful thing too because I felt like I'm positive we did the right thing. I don't have any question in my mind about that. I, I couldn't bear to watch her suffer another minute. Um, so in that respect, it was absolutely the right thing to do. Um, but it still doesn't make it any easier, you know, to, to handle the loss of our little fur babies. Um, so anyway, um, Though for those of you who have had pets and, and had to have them uh, euthanized or what have you, you know, it's just, it's just such a hard thing to do. 
and I wish we could have our, our little pets longer. You know, I wish they lived a little longer and could stick around for a while longer because um, the loss is just so rough. But then I did read something the other day, or actually this morning, when it talked about the reason why pets don't live long lives like people do. It, and it, it, not the reason, but it did say, you know, just imagine how much we love our pets and how uh, deeply connected we are to them. Imagine if they lived even longer and made even more of an impression in our lives, how much more pain we would feel when we lose them. But for me, I mean, that kind of didn't ring true because once you love them, you love them, and that's just that. Um, there's no, uh, There's no going back, you know. And so longer wouldn't make me love my pets any more than I already do when they pass after so many years. My Chloe was 14 years. My Juju was only 11 years old. But in the bigger breeds, a lot of times they don't live as long as the smaller dogs do. And look what I just did. I did that the wrong way because I was talking and we're going to just set that one aside. We're going to cut a new piece. And I'm going to pay attention to what side I'm putting down this time. Okay, so we're going to go like that. All right, and this way I'm putting some pink in with the purple around the outside, and I think that looks really, really good. Oh, I'm just going to cut this piece off too. And there we go. All right, now we're headed in the right direction. And I'm just going to try and put little dots of glue around on this so that I don't have a bunch of glue oozing all over the place. So to all of you who've ever lost your pets, I'm sorry for you as well because I know the heartbreak that you feel when you lose them. You know, my friend Debbie, she takes the, the kitty cats and, and fosters them. And for her, I mean, she's losing kitty cats all the time because some of them have um, illnesses or they're older already. And man, I don't know how she does it. I honestly don't know how she does it because um, she's lost a number of kitty cats. I just realized I didn't get this down low enough. I put it up too high. So I'm going to pull it off there and pull it down just a little bit. And then I'll get rid of that excess glue. There, that'll do. And we've got a few glue strings there, but we'll get those on the back end. Okay, and then... Go. Oh. I want to cut a new piece off here. Because I definitely want to make it match the other side. There we go, and I'm going to cut it 
it like this around this one little pink flower here. This is going to be the end of this lace, just about anyway. I have a little tiny bit left. Okay, so this one is going to go just like that. And again, just a little teeny bit of glue dotted around. And I just want to get underneath this lace just a little bit. And on this side. There we go. Okay, isn't that gorgeous? So far, so good. I'm very, very pleased with the color um, coordination on this. It looks really, really pretty. And then we're going to take, I'm going to go ahead and do this on the outside now. Get it going around from the back to the front. And I think I'll start it in the corner here. And I'm just going to And this, this uh, ruffle just sits in just the right spot. I love this eyelet lace. This is some that I got in Happy Mail, so I'm getting to enjoy it now by putting it on here. I think it's easier to put the glue on the box and then wrap it around. I think I can go all the way across the box with this. just go about halfway because that you know when you put that hot glue on something a cold surface it wants to um, cure pretty quickly so we'll do it that way trouble with doing these boxes is that you know I have to have my camera a certain way um, in order to get you know the good majority of the best parts of the project which is the the top especially in this case and so when I do the sides you guys can't see as much so this is how it's going on the sides I guess I could have done that in the first place and I'm just gonna go ahead and use this last little piece and let it 
come right over the edge of the other piece because this is where this spot here it felt like the ruffle wasn't very ruffly I don't know what happened there but that's okay now it is and we'll just glue these two pieces together there we go so that's what the front looks like just like that isn't that pretty okay and then I was going to check and see if I wanted to my friend um, Melba sent me this other trim and it's uh, pearls and rhinestones and it's really very pretty and I'm wondering if I should go around the edge or the top of this eyelet lace because it will definitely go around the whole box and add this bit of trim and I was so happy when I saw this because it was a nice big piece and I knew I could use it on a bigger project and have it go around an entire box. Because you see, I'll still have some left over once I'm done with this. And I could still put in, I have, will have enough, I think, to put on a smaller box. So, and it just kind of sets it off. I could do that, or I could take this other rhinestone trim and maybe just do the front like I had talked about earlier and have it just going across the front like that to add that bit of detail to the front of the box. And that looks very, very pretty too. Also have this gorgeous stuff. I like to use this for dangles on things because I've got so much of it and if I use too much on big projects, I won't have enough for my other things, but that would be pretty um, just to have a piece of that going across the front like that. Isn't that gorgeous? So, hmm, hmm, hmm. What shall I do? Um, yeah, I could take... Now the pearls look really pretty on this. This, this, these, I'm going to use some of these on the top of the box. So I'm going to save that. I also have this trim. And this would actually, this actually goes really, really nicely around it. Or I could even do something where I go sort of around the outside of this trim. here and go kind of in between. That way the whole box would sort of be covered with all these beautiful laces and trims and stuff. That would be pretty as well. And I have more of this so I could do around the whole the whole thing with that. How's that look you guys? Or is it better without it? Eh, we don't need that. We don't need that. I think I'm trying to put too much on there, which I do sometimes. I tend to over embellish. I know this. Sometimes more is not better and that is definitely too dark of a pink. Okay, so next um, I've got, let's see, I've got this bow that I made and this is just a lace bow. And I want to put that on the top somewhere because it looks so gorgeous. It would also be gorgeous um, on the front of the box here. But I really want this to kind of go on the top with some flowers. Um, I will put something on the front of this as well, but I'm just not sure what that's going to be yet. So I have Debbie from Bird's Place sent me some of my favorite rosebuds so I have a nice big bushel of those and let's get into our flower box I have these So 
sorry about the crinkling. For those who don't like crinkle, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. And I've got some more of these. And I think those are the same. Okay. Oh, and look at this pretty ribbon. Isn't that gorgeous? But there's, there's not enough of this to, to do anything really with. Not on this box anyway. I've got this beautiful trim that I could use a piece or two of. Hoo-hoo! And I have some of my green and pink flowers, but I don't think I'm going to use those on this. I don't feel like they go really well. There's a couple of just plain white flowers. I'm just checking you guys to see what flowers I've got and what I want to use. And I have a few of these smaller flowers. So we're just going to pull those for now. I can't wait to use this piece. She sent me this tiny piece of trim, but you know I'm going to find a great place for this. It's got silver in it. And they're actually little, actually it's not silver, it's clear sequins that make it look silver. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. I would love to have a couple of yards of this. So, Debbie, if you know where you got this trim from, you have to let me know, friend, so that I can get some, or you have to get me some so that I can buy it from you. Because I would love some more of that trim. Okay, so let's get busy here. We've got plenty of flowers and pretty things to put on this box. So what I want to do is I think I want to cut a little bit of this off. Sorry, you guys, I know I'm off camera. I'm just cutting this real quick. Okay, so I've got that piece. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little bit more. This one's gotta come off by itself. I don't know why that is, but it does because it doesn't match up with the next grouping of flowers. So we're going to cut that. We have just this one little piece. And I'm going to cut one more piece that's got the two pieces going in opposite directions. So... <clears throat> Sorry if you can hear Jeff talking outside. He's on his phone, but he's outside my craft room window. And he does not talk quietly on the phone. <laughs> and I don't think he's thinking about the fact that I'm doing a video. He forgets that, and he forgets how loud he talks. He's got a... He's kind of hard of hearing. So the worse that gets, the louder he talks. So... It's just something we live with. Okay, so what I think I want to do is I'm going to put this bow right here. Hold on, you guys. I'm sorry, I'm tapping on the window to try and get Jeff's attention so he'll talk quieter or move to another location. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, he's still standing outside my window. I 
may have to go out and talk to him. Hold on, you guys. I'll be right. Okay, my apologies, you guys. I had to go out and ask him to move. Um, okay, so we're going to put this bow up in this corner for sure. And these flowers are slightly different. These are pink in the middle and white on the outside, and then these have pink all around them. But I feel like this is the pink that I want. The pink is just slightly different on the two flowers. Um, one is a softer pink and one is a, uh, a darker pink. It's just barely different, but it's different. So, and I just have a certain look that I want on this particular box. So, I'm thinking what I'd like to do, maybe have that poke out behind the bow. Like that. That looks very pretty. And put one of those there. And this is one of the smaller flowers. Maybe kind of double those up like that. And then put one white one right there. Doesn't that look gorgeous, you guys? Ooh hoo! Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, and then, where did I put my other ones? I'm going to take some of these rose buds. I'm going to take a, three of them here and put them together like that. Always try to put your flowers together in odd numbers. They're going to look prettier and more aesthetically pleasing if you do that so just always try to do that I'm going to put some on that side and I'm going to grab three more and put three on the other side same same thing three flowers and I'm going to try and do this one so that um, everything is sort of equal to each side. And let me get rid of that. So then we'll have those coming out this side like that. Oops. That one's got to go to the bottom. Like that. And that is perfect for that corner. And then if I can find my other piece, this one, I could take this little piece and sort of have it coming out like right there. But if I do that, I kind of feel like I almost have to do it coming out the other side too. So maybe I need to cut one more of those off. I think this is going to be right, I hope. Okay, so I've got this one that we can go on this side with. There we go. That looks very pretty. Or maybe I should kind of have them coming up back here. Like that's a whole big thing of yeah that looks really really pretty and then this side I'm gonna use another flower like that and I think I'm just gonna go with one of the little white ones put that sort of right uh, maybe right there like that, no, like that, I'm going to have to think about that, I'm not sure if I want to do it that way or I'm going to pull together some of these um, 
rosebuds again. And let's see. Those go there. And I have three more left on this original bushel that I had. And I didn't have to break into my new ones. Yay! <laughs> so let's get these together. So we've got them. You can see how I've got these together. And I'm not getting real close up on this, you guys, because I'm trying very, very hard not to get off camera. I am the worst about getting off camera, and it's so frustrating to me. There we go. I love it. I think that's gorgeous. I think it's really, really gorgeous. So I'm very, very happy with the way that that's turning out. I had this out as well because I thought I might put it somewhere on here just to add that sparkle. This is the most beautiful piece and I have yet to use it and I've taken it out a hundred times to possibly use it on um, pieces that I'm working on and then I always end up putting it back. I really didn't want to put a flower up in that corner though. Um, wait a second. I know I did pull some other stuff out here. I want to put something in the center of this if I'm going to use it, but I don't think it should be a flower for sure. But that's kind of a flower, but it's a rhinestone piece. Or do I want it coming off the side? Oh boy, you guys, I don't know. Maybe I actually kind of like it better on the bottom. I feel like it, it does more for the piece down here. And I was thinking too, honestly, about taking a little piece of this trim and putting it along the bottom of the little bench here, just like that on each side. I think it would look cute. and would add just a little more detail to that. I mean, I'm not going to go across her legs, obviously, but... I don't know. I can cut a couple pieces off and just test it and see. Let me put a little glue behind here. Trying to see if I need three on this side. Kind of feels like I do, but then again, no, I think it only needs two. A little more glue. Okay, so here's what my thought is, is to put just a little piece there and a little piece there. I don't know, maybe not. It kind of looks pretty there. I kind of like it. I don't know. No, 
I don't think so. Okay, that's all right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start. We're going to start gluing things down here, and then I'll decide on this other piece um, once I get this stuff glued down. So first things first. Let's get this down, and I should have thrown these away. I still have the journal. Which way did I have this? Oh my word! Did I have it that way? Or that way? Oh my word. I think it was this way. Yes. If not, well it is now. <laughs> okay, and then... This is going to go here, and I want these coming out like that. I think I put that on there differently this time, but that's okay. It still looks good. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue these down, just like that. Glue these down, just like that. And put our mama flower right there. And our little white one right there. And I just ran out of glue. Always at the worst time. <laughs> there we go. So that's in, all set. Now to get this beautiful arrangement done, and these I'm going to leave exactly where they are. At least these you can't mess up and put them on the wrong way because you've got the flowers on top. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Okay. All right. And then we've got our bow. I'm going to put a decent amount of glue on that bow there. And that's going to go dead center there. And our mama flower. And then I'm going to put these in next. While mama's not quite all the way dry. Get these real quick and get those under her other side. There we go. Look how beautiful that is, you guys. Oh my word. Like I said, this is gonna be, this is quite an elaborate box. But that's exactly what I wanted to do, is make a nice elaborate box that someone is going to really, really, really enjoy. And it will have some pretty stuff on the inside. Isn't that gorgeous? I think we like it. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that's it for those flowers. So I'm going to put those back in their box. I'm debating 
on what I want to put on the front of this, though. I haven't really decided. I don't think I want to put a flower on there, though. So I think I'm going to go ahead and call it a day for the flowers. Putting them in the wrong box. And that can go there. And I'm just thinking. I know I think too much. Do I want to do a corner? No. Okay. Maybe. Now I don't want to put this here because it's kind of a like it's a sew-on piece. And I don't think I want to put it on the front for sure. Okay, where's my other box here? this piece and that might go very pretty on the front of this it's quite large but quite beautiful or I could even take that would be different but we don't want that sticking out that's too bad that's so big that would be pretty I don't think this one's going to be good, no. <clears throat> okay, let's see you guys. I am not having a whole lot of luck here. Um, let's see, Debbie sent me some gorgeous, gorgeous stuff from Bird's Place, and I have it right here. And I was actually looking at these a minute ago. These are some pretty silver butterflies. And one of these would actually be super pretty with these flowers here. Just kind of in the background. I think that would be gorgeous. Or maybe like right there. Yeah. It's got to go on there somewhere. I don't want to cover up all the flowers, but at the same time... I like to tuck things like this into a spot where they're peeking out. But I want to see the back wings too. I don't want to just see the front wings. There we go. I think that's a good spot. So I'm going to just pop some blue, blue, pop some glue in right there, and we're going to pop that pretty little butterfly right there. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Um, okay, and then let's see. Let's see what she put in this bag here. Oh, this would be pretty. She sent me one of her cameos, but it doesn't really go with her. Oh, this is nice. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. But that gets lost in there. This would be pretty just kind of somewhere on top here. My word is that gorgeous. Oh my word. Oh and then she sent me these tiny little bits as well. Those would be pretty just kind of poked in a couple of spots. Maybe down here. I put one there and one gotta be both pink. And one there.
No, I think those get lost in there. They're too small for that process, but these are gorgeous. Look at them. Very, very pretty. They've got little pearls, pearls on them, and I just dropped one into my pile of the abyss here. Oh, and she sent me that too. So those are some of the goodies I got from Debbie over at Bird's Place. Some little charms. And then this is the cameo that she sent me. Isn't that gorgeous? And I wish I hadn't dropped... Oh, there it is. I found it. Yay! So I'm going to put those into my tiny piece uh, trinket holder there. There we go. And this one's going to go in my other one. Okay, so that didn't work out. There's nothing in there that I can use. Um, my word. Uh, let's see, where's my other box? I've got this box, and this always has a lot of pretty things in it. That would be pretty in there. Oh, that looks really nice. I've got these smaller, this is from Bird's Place too. This is one of her blingy pieces that she sells. Um, isn't that gorgeous? And that might be just perfect. Oh, and it is, it's perfect on the front of this. So that's what we're gonna go with, you guys. Am I ever glad I saw that in there? I have this little star too, but that doesn't really go. But this is perfect. It looks gorgeous on the front of this. And I will show you guys as soon as I get this down. I will show you how gorgeous it is. And I'm praying that I'm getting it good and centered. Okay. I think we've got it, you guys. The box is done. We may have to do the journal in a different video. I don't know. Oh, we have to hook this in somewhere. Let's see. Where do we want it exactly? That covers up that rose back there, so we don't want to do that. That looks good right there. A nice pump of glue in there and pull it out just a little bit there we go okay super beautiful now the other thing we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna take a little bit of resin and I'm just squeezing it into my little cup my little resin cup here and I have a brush in there this is my resin brush and I'm going to dab these flowers with resin and you guys know what's coming next. Me and my diamond dust, my glass glitter, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. It's got to be there and this particular image looks really really nice with the glass glitter in with the flowers and stuff. And with her little bouquet. And she has a little flower on her hat, her hat here. I'm going to put just a little swipe right there on the front. Okay. And I think I'm going to dot just little bits along the bottom and the waist of her skirt. Okay, so now I've got my glass glitter right here and I use Floracraft Diamond Dust. 
clear. This is the clear. And we're just going to sprinkle that right over the top. I'm not going to be too aggressive with it, but we do want it to stick in the spots that we need it, and it won't stick where it doesn't need to be. So there's that. And then I'm feeling like maybe I should put a little bit in the uh, flowers here. I don't know. You know what, you guys? I'm not going to put any glass glitter on these flowers. I'm only going to put, put it on the image. Decision made. Okay, so let me just... I'm going to tap this down just like this to try and get that glass glitter to just kind of lay down and not be sticking up too much and I'm just gonna pop it over my trash can and then I'm gonna get my lamp I don't want those pieces sticking out there okay so let's get our lamp this is my beautiful lamp and I'm going to do it on 90 seconds, and I'm just going to set it over the top of the box here and let that go. Okay, you guys, so look how beautiful that looks. It's got the pretty glass glitter on it and all our beautiful flowers. And that's what the front looks like with that pretty dangle piece of bling. And then, the reason why we're going to have to wait on the journal, let me get this open. Okay, I'm going to put something on the inside here, and I was thinking, honestly, I was going to put this picture on the inside. Isn't that pretty? And then put something around the edge here. So, I think the best thing for that, it might actually be, that would dress up the inside, but boy, that's kind of using that up a little too much, I think. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I think I do have enough of this, so maybe we'll just put this around that rim. I still have to glue this down, so I'm going to pop that up. First, I'm going to glue this down. We're going to use our Fabri-Tac to glue this picture down. And I'm just going to drizzle that around the bottom of it. Man, this stuff is so hard for me to squeeze and get out of here. But I don't want to I don't want to open the hole any bigger because then I'll end up getting it all over the place and I don't want that either so I just suffer through the squeezing okay so I'm gonna center that right there and I think that's good press it down Okay, and then I'm going to take, I think I'm going to use this for this too, and I'm just going to squeeze it right back behind there, and now I can use two hands. I'm sorry if my head is getting in there, you guys. And I'm going to press that down just like that. And I cut this piece so it would just fit in here. And I need to take one of my paper towels here. 
Sorry, you guys, these are kind of sloppy. I've already used them once, but that's okay. As long as they're not all filthy, I can use them again. I'm just going along this edge here just to make sure I don't have oozing glue all over the place. Try not to let the paper towel stick to it. And I can take my nail and just sort of go over that and get it off of there. No worries, I did Peel the paint there a little bit, but that's okay because we're still going to put this around right there. So let's get our glue gun and let's get to work. We'll start up here. Just put a little bit to get it going. Okay, this is hard to do because I only have this small workspace and this is a big box. That's the other thing. This is quite, ugh, and I just went off kilter there a little bit. That's okay. I can fix that. Got a little bit of ooze. Definitely did not want that to happen. That's where I went off track. Okay, we're not going to worry about that this second. Let's get this on here. Trouble is, my hands are a little bit shaky, you guys. So... It makes it kind of hard to run a straight line sometimes. And of course that dried too fast. be glad when this part's done. So we're not going to go quite all the way across there this time. I do like this trim because I can get around corners well with this. It doesn't get off, get all wonky on me because it, it can get around the tight corners. sides are where it's hard because I can't seem to stay along the line. And we're going to cut that right there. So let's do that now. There we go. That looks gorgeous. And then maybe, maybe just maybe, should we use this on the inside here? Look at that. I've got to use this piece sooner or later. It's got to get used. And this box is just seems like a 
perfect place to use it. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm snipping off some uh, loops on this button that I have here. And then maybe that in the center. I have to remember, I do have, let's see. Yeah, this has to come to the outside of this, so I can't put it too, uh, I like that there. Woohoo, I'm excited. I finally get to use this. Now, I'm just going to let you all know, this box will not be a cheap box. It will not be inexpensive. It will be one that may sit in my store for a little bit because... It's going to be a little more pricey than the other boxes that I've done, but that's okay. It's going to have beautiful stuff inside of it, and you guys will be able to see everything that's going inside once I list it in my store. Um, but nonetheless, it's going to be gorgeous. I'm going to put a little bit... of Fabri-Tac on this. It's got all this stringy stuff on it. Just going to put a little bit of that in the center and then I'm going to put hot glue around that. And very quickly we're going to put that right in the center of that piece. Just like that. Look at that, you guys. Oh my goodness, is that beautiful or what? And then the inside here, um, let's see. I think what I will do with that is take some felt. I have some white felt and I will line the inside of the bottom of this with some white felt. But I don't have it handy right now, so that's something I'll do off camera. And you guys know all I'm going to do is cut it to size and glue it down. So it looks beautiful though. I'm super, super pleased with this box. I mean, super pleased with how this turned out. And um, again, I'm going to be doing this journal to go inside of it and this is going to be one of the things inside of this box and you can see it matches this and it matches the journal so those are a couple just a couple of the things that will be in this box when I put it up for sale and you'll just have to see pictures um, in my Etsy shop or possibly at the end of this video if I can get everything together I'll take pictures and put it at the end of the video for you but um, we'll get the rest of this stuff done and ready to go and maybe I'll do a quick uh, video on the journal but this is the box you guys came out super super gorgeous there's the outside and there is the inside so that is what it looks like you guys super gorgeous I'm super duper happy with how this turned out and you can see I punched the edges of this image to make it look lacy I'm gonna get all these glue strings off of here too you guys but there's a couple of them there um, but I did punch the edges to make this lacy around the edges and it came out really really pretty and it was nice because the punch, actually the size of the, the cutout just worked out to be perfect with my punch. And so my punch did a really nice cut around the edges. And um, it came out really, really pretty. So anyway, this is um, the box. I will be putting good, good things on the inside of this. It may not be really an embellishment box. I think this is going to be, I'll call this one a goodie box. Um, so I think it'll, it'll have more of maybe some things that I've made that will be kind of embellishments. And of course the journal is not an embellishment. This is a decoration for your 
Christmas tree if you want. And then, um, you know, a couple of other uh, bits and pieces that you guys can maybe use in some of your crafting and or decorating. And that's going to be it. I will probably put a tag in here. I do have another um, another image here that I plan on using on a tag, so I will probably turn this into a tag. So that's going with the rest of the stuff. And that's it. So anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making this, and I've been so excited about doing this box. I wanted to do it um, yesterday, but Jeff and I had somewhere we had to go yesterday, so I didn't have a lot of time. And plus, yesterday was super, super down. And it, I, I did do some crafting in the morning, but it was crafting things that I knew, you know, what I was going to do, and I was all set, and I was just making some of my bumblebees for um, one of my beautiful customers, Diane, and um, so I just went ahead and did that yesterday, but I couldn't wait to do this box, and I couldn't wait to show it to you guys. This is one of the nicer cigar boxes that I've had for a while, been waiting to... Um, embellish and I finally got to do it so yay <laughs> so anyway thanks a lot you guys for watching and please have a beautiful and blessed day take care of yourselves stay safe stay well and again love your families love your pets tell them you love them every day hugs and kisses all the good stuff and blessings to all of you god bless stay tuned for pictures on the back end please 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 hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. All those thumbs up are helping me so much to increase my subscriber base and leave a comment because all of that stuff tells YouTube my videos are worth watching and um, it will help me to grow. We have hit the 9,000 subscriber mark so you know what that means. It's time for me to do another giveaway video. So Sometime in the next couple of weeks, I will be doing that, and we'll be doing an awesome giveaway, and share my videos to your friends and family, because the quicker we get to 10,000, 10,000 is when I'm going to do a super, super, super awesome giveaway. So um, I thank you all for subscribing, for all of you who have been longtime subscribers, new subscribers, everybody. I love you all, and I thank you so much for your support and um, your blessings and thank you to everyone who has donated to my channel to help me to be able to create these these things for you and um, you guys have been awesome to me so generous so wonderful and I there's nothing I can do to repay you all for all of the kindness you've shown me and um, I just I thank you so 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 much and um, I hope you are all blessed to the ends of the earth um, because you've certainly blessed me. So anyway, thanks so much, you guys. Love you. God bless. Bye-bye.